So hello everyone. Welcome back to Controllers Knowledge. In this video, we are going to learn about the boost power factor prediction circuit. If you are working on the power electronics applications, you must have heard about the PFC power factor correction. So why do we need the PFC circuit in the power electronics applications? If you are working on power electronics, especially on electric vehicles, EV chargers, and many other applications, you must need the rectifier to convert the AC voltage into DC voltage. And when you are using the rectifier, normal bad bridge rectifier, and depending upon the load requirement, the input current is having the large PSD, that is total harmonic distortion. So the power factor is nothing but that is equals to cos phi divided by square root of 1 plus PSD. So power factor depends on the angle between the voltage and current and the total harmonic distortion in the current waveform. If the angle between voltage and current equals to zero, we can say the power factor is equal to unity. But the condition holds PhD should be equal to zero. But if your current signal is having large PhD, that will also affect the power factor of your input signal. So whenever in your household applications like your TV, your washing machine, your refrigerator, all are equipped with PFC circuit. What happens without PFC? Let's have a look on this waveform. So this is our voltage, this is the AC voltage, and this waveform shows the current waveform without power factor correction circuit. So if you are taking the total harmonic distortion for this current waveform, it is having huge GHD, it could be more than 100%. So this much of PSD is going to reduce the power factor of your system. So whenever such instruments, such devices are connected to your household, your domestic application, that will lead to large amount of utility bills. And you will get the penalties from the government, from the distribution systems. So how to avoid these penalties? And how to avoid such excess bill? So you can install the PFC circuit after your metering. So what the PFC will do, PFC will improve the shape of the current waveform, of the input current waveform. So this results, you can see that this is the current waveform once you install the PFC circuit. So if you are measuring the PSD, and if you are measuring the angle between the voltage and current, that is also equals to unity. That means the power factor can go to unity in this case. So in this simulink, in this video, we are going to build and design the 3.6 kilowatt boost PFC using ATLAP simulink. So if you haven't subscribed my channel, Please go and subscribe the channel for the latest updates. So this is the boost PFC circuit. Here we are building the circuit in the two stage. The first stage is the power circuit, and the second stage we will go for the controller designing. So the first we will look at the PFC, the boost PFC. So this is the AC source 
and this is the diode which is active fire and uh, this is normal the boost converter. So, in the boost converter we are having the inductor, input inductor, this is the switch, you can use the IGBT and a MOSFET depending upon your requirement, this is the diode and uh, the output filter capacitor and that is load. So, here the main task is to design the input inductor and the output capacitor based upon the power rating. So, how to design the input inductor and the output capacitor based upon the power rating, we will see in a few seconds. So, this is the script I have written for calculating the input inductor that is filter inductor and uh, that is known as a boost inductor and the filter capacitor that is output capacitor. So for that one we have considered the AC voltage is 230 volts RMS, input voltage is 195 that is minimum input voltage, output voltage is 400 volt that we need to regulate, output power which we have considered is 3.6 kilowatt, the switching frequency for the Converter is 50 kilowatt. Efficiency of the converter is considered as that is 95 percent. The fundamental AC voltage is 50 hertz. Uh, it will be 60 hertz depending upon the locality. If you are in India, you have the 50 hertz, and if you are in US, it will be 60 hertz. The power factor of the desired power factor is almost unity, and uh, the current ripple is uh, then 10 percent of the peak. So, the output current will be the output power divided by output voltage and uh, based upon the output current and based upon the output power, if you know the efficiency, power factor and minimum voltage, the input RMS current will be defined by these equations. If you know the RMS current, the peak current will be the square root of 2 into the RMS current and uh, if you know the maximum, we can find out the average current based upon the 2 by pi into maximum current. The ripple in the maximum current is considered as 10% uh, that is delta i is 10% of the maximum. Therefore, the peak value of the inductor current will be the maximum current plus ripple current by 2. So, this is the current, the peak current the inductor can achieve. So, the input inductor that is the boost inductor is calculated to design by considering that a duty ratio is 0.5. Therefore, the boost inductor is calculated by the equation and uh, the output voltage ripple is considered as 1% of the output voltage. If output voltage is 400 volts, the ripple will be plus minus 4. And based upon the uh, ripple, we can calculate the output capacitor. That is, depends upon what is the current requirement, what is your uh, fundamental frequency, and what is the ripple. Based upon this one, we can calculate the output capacitor and uh, uh, boost inductor. Now we will run this. And uh, we can easily see that the inductor is 7.204 E minus 5 and the capacitor is 0 0.036. So, inductor is uh, 0.72 milli Henry. So, we have considered we have kept the inductor that is 0.75 milli Henry and uh, the filter output filter capacitor value is that is. 3600 microfarad. So, our power requirement is uh, 3600 watt, 3.6 kilowatt, and uh, we know that output voltage we need to regulate at 400 volts. So, based upon our load resistance is kept as 44.44 ohms. And uh, the input voltage is considered as 230 into 
uh, it's called Rotor 2, that is 325 peak amplitude and the frequency is considered as 50 hertz. So now we will move to the PFC controller designing and uh, we will see how to uh, do in a closed loop manner. So our main aim is to synchronize this AC voltage with the AC current this AC current with the AC voltage and that the phase difference should be equal to zero and uh, the vacuum should be pure sinusoidal. So it should have minimum PSD and uh, the phase length should be equal to zero. So we can easily achieve the unity power factor. So now this is the uh, the output voltage that is the load voltage and this is the reference voltage that is subtracted and given to the controller that is the voltage controller and that is output of the voltage controller is limited uh, because the controller which we have designed for the particular current rating so the output of the controller need current reference need to be uh, need to be kept limited and here the AC voltage is this is the our AC voltage, this is the grid voltage, and it is generating the unit vector. So this is generating a reference current, and this is the actual current, actual inductive current, and this error is passes to the PI control again controller, and this generates the control signal and that is given to the uh, switch S1. So this is the switch S1 and this PWM process is given to the switch S1. So now we will see what are the value we kept inside the block, the ideal first order filter, then the PI controller uh, and uh, what the frequency which we have considered here. So in the first order filter we kept this time constant equal to 10 milliseconds where the initial DC, initial DC input is 300. Volt and uh, in the PI controller, we kept the proportional value is 0.1 and integral value is 100. Where the PI controller discrete time time domain is considered and the sampling time is considered as one mega one megahertz. And the current is limited to the 40 amps here. The AC voltage is divided by the peak of peak voltage that is 325 volts to achieve the unity uh, unit factor template and it is taking the absolute value. So we will get the only positive value. The positive value is uh, multiplying with the reference current, this is the peak of the reference current to get the total reference current and the reference current is subtracted from the inductor current. And the current controller PI values is considered as 1 and 500, where the settings are kept as a voltage control loop. The saturation block is considered as 1 and 0, and the repeating sequence, the switching frequency is considered as 50 kilohertz. So, this is all about the control. Now, we will look at the waveform. Now we will run the simulation and we will look up look about the waveform. What is the AC voltage? What is the AC current? And what is the DC link voltage? Whether we are able to regulate the DC link voltage and we are able to get the AC voltage with a minimum PSG and that should be synchronized with the AC voltage. So I'll fast forward this uh, simulation. So now uh, we will look at the voltage and current waveform and the steady state conditions. So if if you are looking at the starting conditions, you will see the large inverse current. So that inverse current, what you can do, you can limit by keeping the pre charging resistors. And uh, to to or, or what you can do, you can pre charge the capacitor output capacitor. So this in, you can avoid this inverse current. And if you're looking at the output side, the steady state waveforms, and uh, if you're looking about the 
the output voltage and if you're looking about the ripple that is the plus minus 4 volt is the as we are going to expect so 10 percent 1 percent of the output voltage so it will be plus 4 and minus 4 and if you're looking about the current and you can see that the current the voltage and the current almost in the same phase uh, that is all both are starting from the zero crossing and if you are looking about the current PSD, so what we will do to measure the current PSD, we will go to the uh, discrete the power GUI and the power GUI we will go to the FFT analysis and here we will tag the IAC and the timing we are putting the same 50 hertz. And you can see that the, the total THD, the current THD is 2.35 percentage, uh, whereas the fundamental current is 22.96 percentage. Now, if we are looking about the THD at 0.2, we will see the THD at 0.2 where PFC is not started. So you can see the THD in the current is. Uh, 107, 107 percentage, and the fundamental current is 15 ampere. Where, if you're looking at the PSG and steel state conditions, that is 1.2 seconds, and you can see the THD in the current is 2.35 percentage. So, there is a huge decline in the current THD, and if you are looking at the voltage and current waveform. And both are synchronized with each other. So you can say that this we can able to achieve the unity power factor operations with the help of PFC boost converter. So if you like this video, uh, you can comment me on the comment section and you can you can support me and my channel to uh, to reach back to many researchers, many industrials. Personal, personal. So uh, I will beneficial, and you also will get beneficial. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe the channel. Thank you. See you in the next video. Have a good day.